with litter box problems, there's a, a step-by-step -step approach that we need to make sure that everybody is going through. And the very, very, very first one is if the cat is squatting outside the box, if they're spraying, that's going to be behavioral, unfortunately. Um, it's Vertical spraying by males is behavioral, period. Um, squatting, however, male or female, that needs to first and foremost be checked by a vet. They need to have a urinalysis to absolutely rule out a medical condition first. Otherwise, we're not only potentially spinning our wheels and no good is going to come of it, but potentially cat could be getting worse and owners are going to get more frustrated. And all along, it was something we couldn't help them solve anyway. And uh, health issues like that need to be addressed rather quickly, especially with males. So, um, and that's another thing you'll hear too, people coming in very mad and he did it right in front of me. He peed right in front of me or he peed right on me in bed. That comes up or he peed, she peed right on the couch cushion right while we were there. That is actually more a sign of a health problem than a behavioral problem. People think that it's straight up, they're mad at me and that's why they did that so it must be behavioral. It's actually more likely to be a health problem when they do that because it's very much their way of saying, look at me, pay attention. This is something I normally never do and I want you to see it and I'm gonna do it right in front of you because they're trying to get your attention. I mean, it's much like a small child. So um, that needs to be addressed first and foremost. Um, but the common behavioral issue things you'll see are going to be, um, believe it or not, fairly straightforward. So a lot of it you don't have to get too crazy thinking outside the box, so to speak. Um, they don't scoop their box enough. And that's one of the questions I ask right off the bat now because I learned that the hard way after having a conversation with someone for probably 10 to 15 minutes and going through everything I could think of with the box. And then all of a sudden she said, well, and I mean, we scoop it once a week. And I thought, oh my God, I could have just saved a whole lot of time. So do you scoop it daily? Okay. Have you changed the litter recently? Have you changed anything in the house recently? I mean, is there a new baby? Did you change from tidy cat to pellets? Anything obvious like that, big, big changes. Um, the other things that are pretty obvious are hooded, and people don't bring it up that they have hooded boxes a lot because they have always had hooded boxes. So they think of that as totally normal. Nothing to note, you know? But we find it noteworthy. So is the box hooded? Does the box have a litter liner? Um, is the box next to a noisy appliance? Um, cats don't know our laundry schedule. So to them, all of a sudden, if their box is next to a washer and dryer, which is pretty common, people will put it in the laundry room. Um, all of a sudden, there's just noise. They're not aware of what we're doing and are prepared for the noise. Just all of a sudden, they're in their box, and oh my God, it's on the spin cycle. Um, or it's next to the toilet is another one. So um, those are the obvious ones. Then we've got, I've got a three floor house, and I have one litter box in the basement. Um, if you have three floors house, I know you've got enough room for a second litter box somewhere because I have a one bedroom apartment and I have two litter boxes. I know you can do it. So oftentimes it's adding a second litter box um, and then it gets into more complication. It, it gets more complicated once we get through those first like five to six really simple things and then it's about... Um, do you need to add a second litter box and do this? Do you need to just keep the litter box the same but add pheromone treated litter because everything else seems fine? Uh, have you not changed your litter box in years and years and years? Could that be it? Those, those sorts of things. Uh, litter box behavior problems um, should be taken seriously because they cost cats their lives, unfortunately, or they go to the shelter. And how you work through those problems with people can be super simplistic. Like Michelle was saying, um, everything else about the litter box seems fine. It's relatively new. There's no big changes. It's not hooded. It doesn't have a plastic liner in it. It's not next to a noisy appliance, la la. I usually do say, let's try Cat Attract. It's pheromone treated. It attracts them back to the box, that kind of thing. Um, but if there's some obvious problem, I would rather them do that first. What I would say with the litter boxes is one of the primary things is any change you recommend, you know, that the owner agrees that's what they want to try first, is it's very important, in my opinion, to do one variable at a time. 
listen to all these ideas. Do you, how many boxes to how many cats? What litter? Is it hooded? Is it plastic? Do you have them on multiple floors? Da, 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 da. So you have to take in the facts of the scenario they're presenting you and talk with them through it so it's a mutual agreement and you're not just saying, do this, because then it's kind of all on you if things don't go well. So have a mutual understanding of what seems to be the most likely issue. They might not think the hood is the most likely issue, but if you think everything else sounds relatively good with the box and the hood is the only thing, then that's what you would sort of talk to them about. But if we're changing, we're saying you should get a new box because yours is old. You should add Catatrack to it and you should move it somewhere else out of the basement. Okay, we've got three variables right there. And so if it works, fabulous, but that pretty much means we expect the people to keep it on that level keep changing their, their box out every year, which we can't guarantee people are going to do to keep it new and not smelly, because we don't know if that was the thing that changed the cat's behavior. And we're kind of expecting them to keep using cat track, because I don't know which one of those worked technically. Was it one? Was it all three? Was it a combination? Don't know. So that's why you want to just do the one variable approach as close to one variable as you can get. Like, I will do two, because people are like, I need this fixed right away. And it's like, okay, well, I think the fact that your litter box is in the bathroom squeezed between your toilet and the shower is a problem so fine move it and it seems pretty likely that because you only have one on one floor of a four floor house move that litter box out of the bathroom and get a second one on another floor and I but I really really do try to keep it to one variable because then when they come in and tell me it doesn't work I it's so easy then because I can say okay here's what we did all right well apparently we either need to try a new litter in that box or you need to change the location or, or whatever it may be but if they say well we got new litter and this happens all the time and you'll see how frustrating it is people will come in and they've tried to tr troubleshoot it themselves and they'll say well we got a new box we add another box um, we've got them in different locations and we tried and we've got this kind of litter in this box and this kind of litter in this box and it's like oh my god okay I have no clue what could possibly be the problem right now because we've got so many different changes going on and your cat may be continuing to be outside the box because he doesn't like any of the changes you made. But you've made so many, I have no idea what is going to help and what's not. And it's it's really hard to work through those problems with people. And it is especially unfortunate, again, because peeing outside the box is number one reason cats go to shelter, so you feel like it's imperative to help them solve it, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and in keeping with all of that, you'd be really surprised how anytime you're talking to someone about litter box issues and step by step, how we're going to address it, step by step, have you gone to the vet? Um, how many boxes to how many cats? Have you made any big changes recently? Go through it step by step. One of the things that I will sometimes forget to talk to them about um, is cleaning up the urine. And you would be very surprised at how many people tell you they use whatever like dish soap I've heard I've heard Windex I mean like people put whatever on it and um, that very well could be the reason the cat keeps going back there I mean that's not cleaning up the urine smell so um, I do always ask those people are you cleaning the urine with appropriate cleaners meaning you know nature's miracle or, or pet-tastic or urine off or whatever the case may be and are you using it appropriately because the other thing I hear people doing with rugs with blankets is they just put that in the washer and wash it with it you really do need to spot treat it first though and have it saturate it otherwise I can't guarantee that the odors being taken care of, you know? So that's one thing that I try not to forget to ask them because I'm always surprised. Um, but yes, litter box problems are the number one nuanced problem people come in with that you really need to work through um, step by step, one variable at a time with people to try and get the best outcome for them because that's just something that people won't tolerate for very long.